Thank you very much for inviting me to be here. And this is a great opportunity for me to you know, share with you the philosophy of sufficiency economy. Why sufficiency economy philosophy? I've been delivering this um, talk on this topic for you know, so many, many times to people from all over, um, students, diplomats, um, very high rank executives to you know business sector and for the first time that I've been you know delivering this speech I've been asking myself you know why sufficiency economy why is it so important to the world at the moment and I will provide you with the answers but first of all let me introduce you to the type of the now foundation first have you heard about the type of the now foundation no right <laughs> no definitely not definitely type of the now foundation was established by his majesty the king in 1988 right in 1988 you know his majesty the king this king is quite special because he is known throughout the world. I think everybody knows about His Majesty the King of Thailand, right? Because apart from the food, that when you come to Thailand, apart from the food that you have to enjoy, apart from the beautiful beaches, apart from the shopping that you have to, you know, go for an experience. Um, another must visit is the Royal Development Projects under the responsibility of His Majesty the King. And this is a great opportunity because I've heard that you are going to visit, right, one project in Peterborough province. You're going to learn a great deal. How Thailand is coping with um, sustainable development and the changing world of economy, right? And His Majesty the King, you know, is known to be the person who is involved greatly in development. And you know, this king, maybe the Thai, our Thai friends can answer this. This king, which number is him? Number nine, right? This king is number nine in this ninth dynasty. And his bigger brother is also the king. Did you know that? He's also the king, king number eight, right? Um, unfortunately, his bigger brother, or the king number eight, suddenly passed away. He became a king for such a very short time and he suddenly passed away. So, this king, this recent king, king number nine, knows that he has to receive this great burden, I don't want to say great burden, responsibility for the country. Do you know what age when he learned that he had to become a king? Can you guess? How old are you? Oh, you don't want to tell me my age? Oh, do you not want to tell you? Okay. Um, he learned that he had to become a king when he was only 19. And this king, you know, he was born in the United States and he was raised in Switzerland. So he had no experience whatsoever about Thailand or this country. But we are so lucky that His Majesty the King, when he came back to his country, he didn't want to learn about Thailand through secondary data. No, not only through literature, not only through you know, talks about Thailand from experts, not only that. But he wanted to learn about his country through his first-hand experience. So he's known to be traveling all over the country to learn about the problems and to learn about the plights, the poverty of the Thai people. And I can you imagine 50 years back then, there were no, you know, no Air Asia, definitely, right? No lost airline. And the condition, the traveling condition was so difficult. And there was one time, you know, the northeastern part of the country is considered the poorest part of the country. And His Majesty tr was traveling through this area. And there was no road 
just only a path you know, leading to a village in a very remote and rural area. And he was travelling by a car. And it was so really, really bumpy that His Majesty the King was like shaking, shaking in the car all the time while he was travelling. But he still had some this humour. He named this road. And this road still exists. He named this road, you know what he named? He named this road a disco road because it was like he was dancing in the car all the time, you know. So when he came back, you know, with the information, the data he accumulated, he came back and then he started to establish royal development projects one by one out of his own pocket. But then the government began to see his effort. So they said, well, this is going to work. So I'm going to help you by establishing the governmental organization under responsibility of government under the name Royal Development Projects Board, right? But then, as you know, the government somehow has this kind of slow um, red tape somehow, budget constraints, and His Majesty believes that poverty, it doesn't have weekends. Poverty doesn't, ha doesn't have Saturday, Sunday, especially natural disasters. When it's flood, when there's tsunami, you know, when it's drought, doesn't have holiday. So His Majesty said, I want to establish an organization that's going to provide prompt, speedy action to help his people. That is why he established his own NGO, non-governmental organization foundation, Chai Patana Foundation. Chai Patana, what it means, he named the foundation by himself. Chai means, Chai means victory. Patana means development. So combined two words together, it means victory through development. And since then, since, since then, he's been working tirelessly for his people. And, you know, he also came up with this wonderful philosophy of sufficiency economy. Well, as I already mentioned, that when I first delivering this talk about this topic, you know, sufficiency economy is such a abstract term. Right? Yeah. It's not one plus one equals two. No, no. So I've been asking myself, sufficiency economy. The person who came up with this philosophy has to have great understanding about the sense of, can I use this one? Sufficiency, right? before I came up with something like this. And can you imagine, okay, you follow me, right? Can you imagine His Majesty the King? He is a king, right? He has never worked to earn a living. Am I right? Right. He has never worked to make ends meet, right? Like me, right? I earn a living because I have to raise my child. I earn a living because I have to survive. So, how can a king, a king who's never earned a living, who's never made his end meet, came up with such a wonderful idea of sufficiency economy? How did he learn about this sense of being sufficient, right? I've been asking myself, and I'll tell you what I've been thinking. His Majesty the King is the person who is an expert in so many fields. Maybe our Thai friends can tell us what fields that His Majesty the King is an expert in. Can you see some hands, please? Experts in what fields? Rural development, apart from rural development, anything else? About, what about music? Have you heard? He's a great composer. He's a jazz composer. 
to play saxophone. I, I cannot even play a pipe, you know, but he played saxophone and he composed numerous, numerous an expert in sports. Everybody knows C game, right? C game. And you, you guys, you know, your countries participate in this game, right? His Majesty is known to be a great sportsman. He is um, an expert in sailing. He likes sailing very much. So much that he won a gold medal in sailing, in sea game, the fourth sea game. Right, he's an expert. What else? Mm, yes, he's an expert in rural development, he's an expert in soil, he's an expert in water, right? So, is he a man wearing an underpants inside out? He doesn't wear a cape. But why is so, you know, but in so many fields? You know, won gold medal and, you know, composed music and be expert in so many fields in development. Why is that? It is because His Majesty, as I already mentioned, that he involves himself in whatever he wants to study. I already mentioned, right, that he didn't want to learn about the poverty or the problems of sick people through secondary data. But he wants to involve himself in whatever he wants to learn, wants to know. As you can see in this picture, always when he goes in rural area, when it's dirt, when it's earth, mud, he always These people. And with what is this? Information, map, whatever, then provides him with greater understanding. This is him. Not just only that, also he studies whatever he's interested in in depth. Always when he travels, he always carries with him under his armpit. What is this? A map, always, camera, and a pencil, always. Not just only that, he's not the person who knows all, he's not the person who knows best, but he also asks for you know, information, knowledge, expertise from other experts in such fields as well. Who is this? This is my boss, number one boss, secretary in general of the Chai Patana Foundation. He's working with His Majesty the King for ages. This is my second boss, this is my third boss. Three of them, still young, looking so young. Always, you know, His Majesty's office doesn't contain beautiful air conditioner, sofa, furniture, always like this, spread the map on the floor. Everybody scattered around, learning about geographical conditions, social conditions of the Thai people and also of Thailand. <coughs> Not just that, after the study, he didn't really, you know, believe about what others say. So he wanted to conduct the experiment by himself. I'm going to ask you this question. Where should be the best for His Majesty the King to conduct the experiment? Where should be the best place? His own home, right? His own home. Rice field, dairy farm, dairy factory, dairy product factory. It's all 
inside his palace. I don't want to call it his palace because it doesn't really look like a palace. When I say the palace, maybe probably you imagine extravaganza, luxurious, you know, right? But this I prefer to call it the residence because it contains it contains when you walk into the royal residence you're gonna see visit the cows a lot of cows and inside the swimming pool definitely the palace has to have a swimming pool right right do you think this majesty king swim inside the swimming pool inside his swimming pool he raised fish he raised fish because this fish tinglings was traveling across from Japan who's from Japan ah. our king is a great friend with your emperor you know that right and your emperor gave his majesty the king fingling swimming swimming across the sea from Japan and his majesty the king said where should I raise the fish where 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 so, swimming pool is right here. I'm not going to swim. I'm going to raise the fish in the swimming pool. And you know, this fish, this species, is known throughout the country. Very popular fish is known. It's tilapia. You know tilapia fish, right? It's tilapia. Tilapia in Thailand came from Japan. And the fingerling was, you know, delivered to um, the farmers to be the, um, the species for farmers to have um, a good source of protein and to earn income as well. All right, and not just only that, after the experimentation, when he learns what methods should be the best methods to grow rice, to grow good quality rice, to raise good quality fish. Did he keep it to himself? Okay, I am going to grow very good quality rice inside my house and I'm going to eat it by myself. No, not His Majesty the King. When the experimentation yields successful results, he disseminates the results to his people. For example, oops, not yet. I didn't have an example, I'm sorry. <laughs> For example, the, oops, all right. <laughs> For example, the Thai farmers, most of the Thai population, 80% of the population, um, live in rural sector and involved in agricultural sector. So His Majesty is so concerned about the small farmers so he knows that small farmers are small in education, right? Small in education, small in financial status, and small in resources. His Majesty the King decided that the development methods have to be simple for the small farmers to understand. But at the same time, it has to be affordable because they're also low in income, right? But although they're simple, they're affordable, they have to be practical as well. So in Thailand, if you are involved in the development arena, you're gonna know that we use a lot of vegetable grass if you don't know, vegetable grass is the grass that can penetrate the roots and penetrate deep down to the soil. It can break the hard pen soil. The soil is as hard as a stone, can break up. And the root can, you know, penetrate deep down, like two story from the ceiling down to the floor. We use this quite a lot because vetiver is a grass. It's simple and affordable, but at the same time, it's practical. So this, this kind of thing, you know, His Majesty the King disseminate to his people. And he did the same thing 
with sufficiency economy. He has involved himself in the sense of being sufficiency. He's involved himself, not just only that, he's experiment by himself as well. How? How? Comes to the family. Mother. Raise your hand if you have a very strict mother. Come on, raise higher, higher, higher. Your mother is so strict. How strict is your mother? Didn't allow you to drink alcohol, didn't allow you to go out at night. <laughs> Beat you up? No. Some of you in this room has a strict mother. You think that your mother is strict. Thank God that His Majesty's mother was so strict. This is a mother. Where is king number nine? This is the smallest one, king number nine. This is king number eight. And these two kings has oldest daughter. Three of them, three of them. When he was so very young, his majesty the king, maybe you're wondering, what about a father, right? Because I'm saying a family photo, just only mommy and children. Where's the daddy? Where's the daddy? Where's he? The daddy's not here because, unfortunately, the daddy of his majesty the king passed away when he was so very young. Wow, such a tragedy, this is family. Anyway, this mother is a commoner. She's a nurse, raised three children by herself. Not ordinary children, but two kings. Two kings, not just only one king, two kings. This great woman, a commoner, a nurse, raise two kings of the kingdom, right? How? She is known to be a strict mother. When they were studying in Switzerland, this, you know, mother, the mother of His Majesty the King, is known not to allow His Majesty the King to have toys. I mean, yes, if His Majesty the King wants toys, he has to get it by himself. But the mother wouldn't buy the toys for His Majesty the King. How did His Majesty buy the toys by himself? How? Save up from the allowance that the mother gave each week, each month, whatever, right? But if he wants a bigger toy that the allowance cannot cover. What does he do? I'm sorry? Earn money by himself. How can he earn money by himself? This is going to be easier. If you want something bigger, make it by yourself. So, His Majesty the King is known to be a craftsman, as a handyman. I already told you, if you remember, he won a gold medal in sailing. What is this? A sailboat. He built his own sailboat. If he wants something bigger that, can't, that, that he cannot find the money to buy, he just make the toys by myself. So, that is why he has been, you know, raised with this sense of sufficiency when he was a little child by a strict mother and when he experimented by himself, you know, by saving up his allowance to buy the toys and even by 
establishing his own, building his own toys. This frugal habit, this economizing habit has followed him when he grows older. And as you know, His Majesty is, is known to wear very simple shoes, very simple wristwatch, and he used his toothpaste to one last bit, confirmed by you know, his staff and by his dentist. So, when he's learned that this is going to be good because he experienced it by himself, he conducted an experiment by himself and it was good, it was successful. He disseminated the results, what is good for the country. This is the vegetable grass that I already told you. You can, well, um, grow it in contours, grow it in different conditions. Unfortunately, you are going to Petterbury province, right? But you are not going to visit this project. It is under responsibility of Chaitana Foundation. It used the natural methods to treat natural problems. Wastewater problem is treated by natural methods. For example, the weeds, the grass, the sun, the wind, but it has to contain the right amount of bacteria, the right amount of bio, whatever, I, I don't know what it's called, and the right amount, the right angle of sunlight, so it's been experimented. But still, it's cheaper, a lot cheaper than importing the very expensive machines from outside the country. So if you have time, I recommend that you go visit this site. It's going to learn a lot about sufficiency economy. Okay, I'm going to go faster. Let's come to sufficiency economy. You've learned about the background, right? So what about sufficiency economy in the modern world? Why is it so important to the society that we're living in today? I'm going to do it again. <laughs> do you want me to do it again? Yes. <laughs> I'm doing this by purpose. I'm not an idiot, come on. Doing this by, person, uh, um, by purpose. Why I'm doing this? Do you think that our world is getting bigger? in size. Do you think that our world is getting smaller in size? In reality, oh, I'm sorry, in reality, do that, right? Our world is not getting any bigger, then our world is not getting any smaller. What is getting bigger we are eating up our world or not and what is getting smaller definitely according to United Nations population division as you can see the era that we are living right now the population is equal to right here. But in the future, it's going to rise up high. How are we going to live? Anyway, what about the resources? There are three types of resources. Unlimited, renewable, and limited, and non-renewable. What are the unlimited? Definitely wind, the sunlight. We have free stuff. I have to say free stuff, right? The sunlight. So free. It doesn't collect the electricity bill, like the electricity, right? And it's unlimited, on and on, every day. What about renewable? Renewables, forest, soil, right? You can grow forest over again. What about limited and non-renewable? Right? Fossil fuel. Definitely. I want to show you this one. Everybody likes free stuff, right? You like 
things, free stuff, right? But look at this light, who says that we like free stuff? Free or not? Expensive, so expensive. Free or not? No. Free or not? Somehow free. Free or not? Free. What about this? So expensive. But look at the ratio we use. The, re the resources. The ratio is equal to three to one. We consume three, but resources produce one, three to one. So, okay, I'm gonna go through this one. Come back to Thailand. We have been talking about the world already. Come back to Thailand. Thailand has been experiencing ups and downs, right? Before we adopt this efficiency economy, Thailand, we have our own plan, development plan, definitely. And the first plan, we want it to be an industrialized country. But actually, what are we? Are we an industrialized country? No. As I already mentioned, 80% of population earn a living through agricultural activities. So we are agricultural country. But we want it to become rich. But rich in this sense. It's not rich in natural resources, but rich in monetary income, in GDP. So we said, all right, we're going to go for the first national plan. But we had no experience, you know, drafting the plan, so we have to import the persons, the experts who know, who knows how to draft the plan. So we imported the experts from industrialized countries. So our first plan involved so much about growth, about GDP, and we tend to forget about the people about the rural community, about resources, and definitely traditional knowledge and wisdom. Bad things happen. Negative things happen, consequences. So after the five plans, first plans, we tend to focus more on people. But do you think that is working or not? Unfortunately, it was too late. Because in 1997, if you remember, maybe you do not remember because you're so young. 1997, I remember I recently graduated from, I cannot see, anyway. Uh, uh, the GDP, economic growth, was on our focus. So, Thailand faced with the economic crisis in 1997. So that is why His Majesty the King came out and warned us again that we have to adopt sufficiency economy to help gear towards sustainability. Sufficiency economy, you know, when you hear the term sufficiency, it's not attractive. It seems like you're going backward. It's not prosperous, right? But His Majesty the King said, it's not that he doesn't want the country to be wealthy or to be rich, but it has to be rich on the strong foundation, not to be rich on the bubble, like the bubble economy, that finally the country and economy of the country collapsed. Right. So in order to drive the country forward um, in sustainable manner, there are three, three pillars and two conditions. First one is moderation. As I had already told you, this is so abstract. Right? Moderation. I keep saying not too little, not too much, not too little, but what about not too much, not too little? What about moderation? 
how can you measure moderation? I'm going to give you an example. When you earn an income, let's say 1,000 baht a month, 1,000 baht a month, how many, I mean, how much are you going to spend each month? Less than 1,000 baht a month, right? Second question, everybody knows Bill Gates, right? Yeah. Right? Do you think that you can spend like Bill Gates? No. no. Why is that? Why is that? Because your earning capability is, cannot be compared with Bill Gates. Am I right? Am I right? So, in order to go for moderation, you need to be self-assessed or go for self-assessment. This is the key. This is the measurement, self-assessment. Right? Our wants and desires are not measurement, but moderation by capability is. Right? Another, another question. Who in this room eats like a cow, <laughs> but doesn't gain weight? Raise your hand. <coughs> Who in this room eats like a cat, but gains weight constantly? Raise your hand. Just drink the plain water and you gain weight already. So, it's the same. The capability, cap capability, capacity of your, you know, metabolism, not equal. It's not, it's not the same. So, you have to go for self-assessment, for moderation, right? So, I think they're timing me, anyway. The second pillar is reasonableness. My question is that, who in this room has done something so nonsense, irreasonable, raise your hand. Come on. When you fall in love with this guy, he's so handsome. No reasons for that. Especially women, when you flip through magazines, Right? When you flip through magazines and then you say, Ooh, this haircut, this hairstyle is so trendy. It's so in at the moment. I'm going to get this haircut because when it's on the magazine, on the head of the model, it looks so, what? It looks so beautiful. But when it's on you, what does it look like? <laughs> Disaster. I'm not saying that. You say it yourself. So you need reasons. You need reason and you do not follow the trend blindly, right? When the trend says, if you want to be rich, you have to be industrialized. Is it true? No. You have to know your capability. You have to know who you are. And you get rich based on your expertise, based on your skills. You not just don't follow the trend. You have to know who you are. Definitely, right? And the last one is risk management. Definitely. In European countries, even in Asia at the moment, they even put this in the curriculum of business management as well. So, risk management is also the key because you have to create yourself immunity right what about the two conditions two conditions definitely knowledge why are you acquiring degree not just only degree that you want but you want what knowledge and knowledge has to come together with moral principle why I think everybody knows if you're so smart but you doesn't have any moral principle the country is going to be disaster because corruption, one example, corruption is going to happen, right? Right, okay. I'm coming towards the end now. These are the examples of what His Majesty the King says that sufficiency economy needs to be adopted by small farmers. Why small farmers? Because, 80, because as, as I already told you, 80% of Thai population earn a living in 
agricultural sector. The new theory is one form of the land management for small farmers that His Majesty the King said, why don't you have enough to eat first and enough to live first before you become rich? You have to be self-reliant first. So that is why the land is divided into different parts, different portions. For them to grow rice to eat, grow vegetables and grow fruits to eat, have 10% of housing and also some other um, plants that can earn them some money. When they you know, are self-reliant, they can build their wealth on the strong foundation. But not just only the sufficiency economy can be used, applied in the agricultural sector. It can be applied in business sector as well. This is Siam Cement Group. The Thai fellows, I think they know, this is the biggest um, construction company in Thailand. You know, when 1997 economic crisis hit Thailand, this construction company, the biggest in Thailand, went bankrupt under the red line. And the executives came to Dr. Sumed, who is Secretary General of the Thai Patana Foundation, my first boss, then asked, can you help us? Can you help us? And I said, and then he said, how can help I help you? Because I've been in agricultural sector all along. So Dr. Sumed said, why don't we look at our own expertise. Our own expertise is what? Construction. But you follow the trend by when you're successful, when you earn profits, you keep expanding, expanding, expanding. And what happened? Expanding based on what's not your expertise, you know, somehow give you damage. So my boss said, why don't you try cut back the things that are not, the things that are not, you know, um, according to your expertise. So that is why he cut, they cut back 100 companies, leaving just only 100 companies under the area of construction. So right now, after 18 months, the debt's clear. The company has reported the highest profit in 35 years, right? And sufficiency economy is known throughout the world. As you can see, this is the, um, who, who is this? Kofi Annan. You know, he recognized what His Majesty has done, so he gave His Majesty an award, right? And can I have one more minute? One more minute, please. Yes. One more minute, please. One more minute, please. No, no, one, one more minute, please. One minute. Maybe all of you ask me, how can we survive the world? Because this, you know, the world is going forward. We are not going backward anymore. You know, we are a very small country, Thailand. Think about Olympic Games. Who watch Olympic Games? Who like Olympic Games? Olympic Games, right? Olympic Games. Thailand won gold medals in this sports. What type of sports do we win always? Boxing. Why do we win? Boxing. Gold medal always. Why? Why? Because, okay, because it has weights, right? If, if Thai boxer fight with Mike Tyson, do you think what's going to happen? So what I'm saying is that we have to fight according to our capability, our strength, our expertise, and our skills. So that is why we can compete in the world arena, although we are such a very small country. So I've come to an end. Thank you very much for your attention. And if you have questions,